welcome to the second edition of uh, That is Reflecting in My Face. Oh, this, I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> uh, it's like You're when I'm right. teasing my dog with a light. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Like, oh, God, my eyes. Have fun driving, Mr. Big Man. Hey, your life is in my hands right now, <laughs> so you uh, you probably want me to be at full capacity. Probably. Yeah. I, I mean, this is probably a pretty safe car, right? It's... I, I don't want to test that, really. <laughs> it stays on the ground pretty well. That's nice. So, uh, yeah, definitely. I think as far as cornering goes, there's not a good chance of rollover or anything of the sort. That's nice. Um, so we'll probably end up stuck behind a couple of bikers for a while, though. And mm -hmm. in my experience on this road, the bikers are never too inclined, even at a passing place, to really let you pass. Right. So um, this may be our view for at least the next few miles. Oh, they look pretty cool, though. They, I like I, yeah, they look okay. They're not they're not a bad thing to spectate, I suppose. But uh, it's interesting. I always would expect bikers to just be flying through here. Yeah. Um, but they never seem to be. It seems to always be more of like a, a casual cruise. And then you actually have the bicyclists. And I don't know, like mad respect to them for being able to do this. Because, good lord, this I don't know how. This is quite a hill to go yeah. up. And it doesn't end. Oh, this is like ever. a 10-mile hill? Uh, well, I mean... The whole highway goes for 70 miles, so you can go from here all the way to the 15. This is Angeles Crest Highway for anyone wow. watching, and it peaks, I don't know, like 7,000 feet or something like that, and right now I think we're at a couple thousand. I might be off on my numbers, but suffice to say, big climb, I don't know if it hits the peak like halfway through it and then goes down for another 30 miles. Yeah. I don't know where the stopping point is for most of those guys <laughs> doing the biking. Because there's no way they're going all 70. Oh, yeah. I tried biking for a bit. I bought a bike. I uh, I, I cruised around because I wanted to try to beat traffic for a bit. I Wait, when you lane. say a bike, you mean a, a, a motorcycle. motorcycle? Yeah. Okay. yeah. I, uh, I tried the lane splitting, but I had a close encounter with a bus mirror where uh, I was trying to split the lanes, which is legal in Los in Angeles. California, yeah. Yeah, so I was splitting the lane, um, but this bus came over uh, in, like, in between the lane I was splitting, and uh, there was a motorcycle behind me, and suddenly in front of me was a bus mirror. And so I would have hit it if I didn't duck oh my completely, God. like, touching my so helmet to my shoulder. actually went under a bus mirror. Yeah. As much as I could, anyway. But, That's, uh, that sounds very scary. After that, I didn't drive again, or I didn't ride it again, and I kind of just switched to driving normally. Do I mean, you that's, still have it or no? I do, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm about to sell it, but uh, I still have it. it. It's nothing special. It was um, it was the Honda... Oh, God, I can't remember. It's the, the automatic Honda one, because I didn't want to have to deal with, like, shifting in a bike. Because I didn't I, even know there were automatic bikes. Mm -hmm. huh. Yeah, very few. Because they're not too popular because everyone like who rides a bike knows how to shift. But I didn't want to be learning how to ride a bike and learning how to deal with the shifting at the same time. So I wanted to sense. like start on a an automatic with some training wheels on it, like uh, really get my legs under me. But then I uh, then I got the Tesla and I stopped driving. Now right. as someone who has ridden a bike, because I haven't, is there a reason why this guy's blinker has been on for the past couple of miles? No, he just doesn't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. very easy to do. They don't automatically click off on motorcycles. Okay. So if you make a turn and you have the same view, and is it not immediately off. obvious? No, because he can't hear shit. Like so, everything's just wind in his ears right now. So he has no idea that it's on. Anyway, uh, didn't actually get a chance to slip it in there. But this is Markiplier for like the two of you who are wondering who this guest is. There's plenty of people that don't know me. They exist out there in the world, but I think there's a there's secluded a... island in the Pacific Ocean somewhere that don't know me. I I'll, I'll be there soon, don't worry. There's a decent amount of crossover, though, so that's all I'm alluding to. Right. Um, I'm sure that there is some, I don't know, makeup beauty audience you could be on a car driving podcast with that. Because mm -hmm. I'm sure makeup beauty people are doing car driving podcasts, and maybe the audience wouldn't know you in that case. Yeah. But here, pretty safe to say. But anyway, thanks for coming on. Oh, um, no. And back on the topic you just brought up the Tesla yeah I actually wanted to bring this up because uh, Elon Musk has been tweeting the past couple of days about some new features on the Roadster that he's announcing including apparently rockets I don't know how true that is he said they was gonna have a SpaceX upgrade can you imagine the logistical hurdles to have a rocket on a production car. He clarified it a little bit more this morning. It's not it's not like fuel-based rockets, it's pneumatic rockets. So he well, that's at least what he's saying. So it was like 10 
pneumatic air canister rockets that would be around the vehicle. And he said, like, as he clarified it more, it seems like it's something he's serious about and it's not just a joke. In fairness, all of the, like, specs on the Roadster sound like a joke. Yeah. Um, just because of, like, 600-mile range, 1.8 seconds to 60, it all sounds like a joke. I don't yeah. know what's serious anymore at this yeah. point. But in any case, it seemed like he's being serious. I, I could now now that you mentioned the air canister thing, I could see that working for just this tiny poof of air, I guess. But I don't know how that would give you meaningful thrust. Shoot, man, I don't know. But I could see how like having rockets would be incredibly helpful uh, for getting that zero to sixty time. Because when you have something that is giving you power that doesn't require contact to the road, yeah. it makes it far more possible. Oh, yeah. You can have a rocket blast you from zero to 60 as quick as possible. It doesn't matter about putting contact and having traction. Yeah. Um, Torque doesn't mean anything. Yeah, yeah. Rockets. So uh, it'd be cool. I'm just picturing the Martian. You know, in the Martian, like um, they have all those scenes with, uh, you know, doing the little jet packs or gravity. Is it gravity? It's both, I guess. Gravity and, and the Martian. Yeah. They have a, the little jet packs on the spacesuit that psh, mm-hmm. psh, psh, and shoot you in different directions in order for you to control where you are. Yeah. And so I'm just picturing that, but on a car on Earth. I mean, it could work in theory. It's just like, I, I, I've never seen it before, so I don't know how it'd be in action. Because one, when you're in space, there's nothing resisting you moving anywhere. Here you have air, you have like the size of the car itself. Up there, it's just a person in a heavy suit. So being shot over the place, like it works with little puffs of air. But when you got like a, a 4,000 pound car, it's gonna be really, really hard for a puff of air to do it. Is that anything. how heavy they said the Roadster is gonna be? 4,000? Probably, probably not the Roadster, I think. Isn't that how heavy the Model X is? Because Model I X is probably heavier than 4,000. Yeah, okay. I started with the Model S, I moved to the Model X. Uh, just because I wanted more storage space and better room for my dog to travel with me. Um, yeah, I've been thinking about the Roadster. Because the 600 mile range, I would believe, just because it's two 200 kilowatt right. batteries, I have 100 kilowatts in mine, and it goes like 250, 300 it's, if I was being It's two really. 200 or two 100s? Two 100s, because... 200 um, kilowatts total. Yeah, each battery is probably going to supply power to separate motors, so they're not yeah. drawing the same voltage. Uh, so you're going to have like this, I would believe the range, 100%, but only if you drive 65, which no one who's going to buy a roaster <laughs> is ever going to be below 65. I mean, it's, it's wild to think about that car, the idea that you'll be able to like be up here in, in these roads or on a track, you never have to switch gears. It's all just instant power all the time. Yeah. And it's something that I guess Koenigsegg has going on the Regera. I don't know if you're familiar with Koenigsegg as a no. car brand. They had very expensive, starts at about two million. I think they've made one US delivery so far. Mm-hmm. And it's, I think it's a plug-in hybrid. I think it still has a, a gas motor in there. Um, you got a thumbs up from a biker. <laughs> <laughs> didn't even catch it. I was too focused on Koenigsegg. Um, so it, it has direct drive, though, and it has no gear shifting. It's just instant power all the time. Yeah. And it's, it's hard to even comprehend what that would feel like. It's, it's really something you get used to right away because I forget about it until I go back to Cincinnati and I rent a car. Like, I'll rent a car and I'll forget that you, like, you don't have that power the whole time through the first, like, 50 miles per hour. Yeah. Like, it's just... I don't even think about it anymore. So everything's just super smooth. It's one of the best features about an electric car. But I have heard, isn't that like the what you're talking about? The, it's like it's a conical gear that automatically goes up based on inertia, based on how fast I your car's even, going. I don't even know how the science behind not having a gearbox works. I really don't. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I haven't looked into it enough to be able to speak to it. I'm sure I'll just say something totally wrong, so I just won't comment. It's, but it's the internet. You can say whatever you want. If you say it with confidence, it sounds right. It's true. Yeah. It's true. It's not what you say. It's how you say it. Uh, but it's, I don't know. It has to do with the electric motors and all that stuff. Oh, but yeah. it's just, I, I can't wait to try it because I still haven't even driven a Tesla. You haven't? No. Never? So if you ever want to let me get behind the wheel, I never oh, expect yeah. it because I never, I never give people, I never hand off the keys I to would, my car. I wouldn't want to get behind the wheel of this thing. I would, I would feel horrible if I even got like a pebble hit it. Like, <laughs> I, and and number one, I wouldn't be able to do it to its full advantage like you're doing it right now. Uh-huh. Got a little moment there. 
have a bit of fun. I know it distracts you and uh, sort of as we go by some police officers here. Um, <laughs> good thing they were outside their car as we were definitely obeying the uh, speed limit there. Well, what is the speed limit here? I think it's 60. Cool, yeah, you were going 60. I actually probably was by the time that I uh, sped up a little bit well, there. Well, yeah, either way, if a cop's out of the car and he doesn't have a radar gun, there's no way for him to actually true, prove true. you were going any speed at all. So he can make casual observations, but it's not provable in court. So even if they pulled you over and they're like, you were going this, you, they wouldn't have any evidence to bring up. But just to be clear to everyone, I was going well below the post. Oh yeah, absolutely. In that yeah. situation. This car's just loud. It is. It's like this when it's pulling out of the garage. <laughs> and actually, it sounds best when it's in a garage because then you have the echoes. Um, it's funny, I get comments sometimes from people when I've had the car on in the garage for a minute and everyone's like, you're going to suffocate, you're going to die. Of <laughs> like, you guys realize it takes in a pretty sealed up area like a solid 10 or 12 hours before that becomes problematic. Yeah. Just so you guys are aware. And even, even if you have, if you, even if you do the thing where you put a hose from the tailpipe into the car, it still takes like it takes a long time, thirty minutes to an hour, yeah. to actually suffocate. So don't worry, guys, it'll it'll be okay. If you see me have the car on in the garage for a few seconds, we're generally gonna be all right. Um, anyway, though, so back on the uh, Tesla thing, how long have you had your Model X? I mean, you told me, but just for the sake of the camera, what model do you have, and how do you like it? I started with the uh, Model S. I got, I didn't get the performance model. I just wanted the longest range at the time because I just wanted to be able to not have to charge very much. I didn't know how the charging was going to work. I didn't know if I was going to need it more often than they said they would. So I started Model S 90D. Great car. Delivery took forever but great car. Not as long as you had to wait for this. So yeah, I think I, nothing I competes with this. I tried to put everything <laughs> in perspective and be like, eh, you know, maybe I didn't have to wait that long in, right. in conjunction. But I love the car. It was a completely different driving experience than I've ever had because I've never been a sport car guy. And I kind of lied to myself and I was like, I'm not buying a sport car. I'm buying the future. <laughs> like some bullshit like that I told myself. Or sorry, do you not want me to curse here? Oh, you're fine. Okay, do whatever good. you want. I never right. censor other people. All right, cool. And so uh, it, it was just it was just this uh, really really fun experience uh, that I've never. Did you had test drive or did you just I get did. it? Okay. I did. I was in Cincinnati when I test drive because there's actually a Tesla place right by my mom's house, and I was talking with uh, my girlfriend at the time, and I was just like, I've always been curious. Let's just pop in for a test drive. And after the test drive. It was fast, it was fun, it was great. It wasn't until they turned on the autopilot that I was sold. Okay. Like, when, when he turned it on... So it's a test drive where you don't even drive for part of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, he just told me to push this lever twice, and it was just like, boom, boom, and like it just started going on its own. And I was like, holy shit, this is terrifying. Because when you see that wheel move and you're not touching it, you're like, like I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna die. My Mercedes had right it, up. it was a little trick getting used to it. Yeah. But uh, it's been it's been really fun. The only there's downsides to it too. Like uh, I know I know there's people that are like super Tesla fanboys uh, and fan girls. It's just um, there's upsides and downsides because the charging it is time consuming. Like if you're going on a road trip, I drove when I switched up to the Model X. I switched up because they kind of misled me because they said that the first model had all of the hardware necessary to be fully self-driving capable. I asked that specifically, and they said that it did. So it was the rep at the store that just didn't know their stuff? It was the rep, probably. I'm not going to blame anyone specifically. I've never followed up on it. I've mentioned it a few times, but I'm never going to actually get to pursue anything. But when I traded up for the Model X, it had all the self-driving hardware. I got the performance model because it holds its value the most and it's faster. Uh, I got the 100 watt hour battery or kilowatt hour battery and uh, I was just like I was all about okay if I'm gonna go in I'm gonna go in whole hard so I got the car and I drove it right I picked it up and immediately drove to Cincinnati from Los Angeles 2,000 miles the ultimate test was drive. that as a test or you had something that you needed we had, to do we, a road trip we were going for. to Christmas like it was Christmas with the family so Amy me and my dog Chica we were in the car together that was another reason why I got the Model X because more space for Chica to actually sit down and lay down we could put a bed in the back and she was real comfortable back there it was so cute but uh so we drove it all the way over and it was really nice I used autopilot maybe like 75% of the time oh, that's great uh which really takes the edge off of a long long haul trip like, uh, but I'm still super paranoid about it. I always keep a hand on the wheel. Mm -hmm. um, but 
the charging. It added another full day to that trip. No kidding. Like, you can get 2,000 miles in, like, two days if you really, really, really push it and you, like, no sleep. Me, we were taking our time driving, like, 14, 16 hours a day, just going straight on. But the charging, every 250 miles or so, we would have to, probably, like, 200 because we were going the speed limit yeah. the whole way through. But uh, we were uh, we had to stop sooner because if you go faster, it takes more battery. And so what it ended up being was it added a total time of 12 and a half more hours to the trip, just oh charging, God. to go from Los Angeles to Cincinnati. And it's funny because you messaged me this morning mm -hmm. as you were on your way over, and you said, hold on, I'm going to be a few minutes late, got to charge I got to stop for it. You didn't say anything about a car. It was just, I got to stop for a charge. And it took me a second. <laughs> I was like, what do you, not your phone. Oh, your car, right. Yeah. You have to do that in those cars. Yeah. And so does that mean you can't charge it at home or it was too low? Once I can't. You... Yeah, I didn't plug it in. What I, what I needed to do is uh, I don't have the high voltage or high amperage plug in my garage. So I need to get that installed, but until I get it installed, I can only plug it into an outlet. And going... Does it from, take ages? It takes somewhere like over 50 hours. If you were to charge like the 100 kilowatt hour battery from a normal plug, over 50 hours. Oh my God. People, yeah, people underestimate. Like you say 100 kilowatt hours and you're like, oh, that's a big battery. This battery is fucking huge. So that's actually an issue I've always thought of is what happens if you live in an apartment building and it doesn't have the fancy plugs and you just have a regular garage space. Maybe it doesn't even have out, an outlet next to it. What do you do if you have a Tesla? You that, just can't own one. That's the benefit of superchargers if you do have one in your area. Um, other than that, they're starting to pop up more electrical chargers because it is becoming more prevalent. But even the non-Tesla electric chargers, if you were to try to charge from full, usually they're about 30 amps. It's still gonna take you like eight, 12 hours which could get it overnight. If you're only traveling a few hours a day, right. that's totally fine. Like you can live with that. If you only need to do a commute to work that's maybe like 50 hours or 50 miles total, then that's gonna be fine for you. If you have to, uh, yeah, but the supercharging even by itself, like it does take time. It's more than a gasoline stop by a huge margin. If you're, if I'm on the road, our average stop time, like traveling like 200 miles at a time, was 45 minutes. 45 minutes? Yeah. I didn't realize, I thought it was like 15, 20. That's what they want you to think. But so it's not quite as advertised. That's, it's 15 minutes, it's 15 minutes to get like 30% charged. Like that's, I a, see. that's enough. They so advertise it's like you it just need miles. to top off and that's how long it takes. Yeah, they say 100 miles in like 15, 20 minutes. And that's kind of true, but only at the beginning of the charge cycle. So it starts out going fast, and then like any lithium ion device, it has to slow down because it doesn't want to blow up the battery. So it has to I actually that. never looked into the reason why. I just knew that's kind of the case. But it's so if it charges too fast, it'll injure yeah. the battery. The battery can overheat. The battery can degrade. If it goes too fast, like the reason lithium ion batteries degrade is because when it moves the uh, moves the material between the actual lithium in between the cathode and the anode, when it reforms back into its charged state, it doesn't form in an even flat pattern. It forms these little dendrites that are like little sticky outy bits that cause it to uh, inefficiently send the lithium back over. I like how this is turning into like a, a really sciencey talk kind of thing. I mean, when you think about like the, when, when cars, like you talk about the science of cars all the time, like this is just a different version of science. Yeah. Like it's a completely different branch, but you still have to like understand it just as much. And I mean, not to drive. Did you, don't you did you learn most of this because of buying the Tesla and you looked into it? Oh no, it? like I, I, I'm like an information sponge. Like I look up I'm gonna sound like a fucking nerd, but I, I, I like I like to go to Wikipedia and hitting the random thing. Really? Because okay. I like just looking at random pages, and occasionally you'll find something fun, but occasionally you'll find something interesting. And batteries, in a, in a, in like a general sense, just really fascinate me because like the future of technology is based on how much energy we can put in a battery. Like that's Absolutely. really what it is. Like because we have the ability to make these like exoskeletons that make soldiers into super soldiers, but how are you gonna power it? Uh -huh. like, 
Like those are the questions that need to be answered before you're able to do the amazing leaps that you need. So when the next thing after lithium ion batteries comes around, you're gonna see another leap in technology. Tesla itself couldn't exist with the previous version of rechargeable batteries. I believe they were cad cadmium nickel, Cat sounds, sounds right. Something like that batteries where they would really degrade faster over time. But lithium ions, they are available, they're higher voltage, so you can get more power out of it. Uh, they're able to be stacked more safely. They're a little unstable, like due to heat. So you, like we learned a lot of stuff about safety. But as lithium ion technology is reaching its peak, we're gonna need another leap before we're able to do anything. Do you know, have you looked into have we settled on a candidate for what follows up lithium ion or that's still being researched? Not really. Like they've gone backwards in a few senses because they've made some advances on the previous technology to make it less degrade because it's cheaper. Like lithium is expensive, uh -huh. but uh, the cadmium nickel, whatever it was, that's cheap. Like you can make that way, way, way cheaper than uh, another thing. There's more technology going into magnesium ion batteries. Magnesium is way more prevalent in the Earth's crust than lithium, right. and they're only just starting to use it for like the alloys of laptops and stuff like that. So it could well be that the next, the best thing you can do in batteries is something that requires a resource that's so scarce it can simply never be affordable to do. It could be, and that would be scary. Like that would really be scary because then we would know a hard limit of how much like portable energy we could have. Well, it just means that we have to find another option basically yeah. like there's always gonna have to be a balance between like affordability and uh, usability absolutely so, yeah. and fortunately with technology it seems like we're able to make things get cheaper over time for the most part but there's always gonna be some limitation there as we use up more of the Earth's resources nothing is ever gonna be infinite yeah absolutely I mean, it's it's uh it's like infinite growth, infinite growth in a in a contained system is unsustainable. Like that's the phrase that everyone likes to parrot or something along those lines. Uh -huh. You literally can't have infinite growth. There's a limit to everything. There's a limit to resources. There's limits to pretty much everything that we have on this earth. But thankfully, we're not we're not that close to reaching those limits no. yet. We will someday. And we will run out of things that we need at the worst opportunity. But right now, <laughs> we seem to be doing relatively okay. I don't think okay. there's ever a good opportunity to <laughs> run out of resources. You ever played Fortnite? It's never a good time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I am in a Fortnite tournament on Tuesday, and I'm not looking forward to it. Oh, right. Yeah, the, the charity thing at E3. Yeah. Have you played a much of the game? I've played tons of the game. But the thing is, I played Fortnite before they had a Battle Royale mode. That's why my name is still Markiplier, like, in the game. I I was super early, into yeah. the single-player version of the game. Like, I was into it. By the way, I, I'm scared as hell right now. <laughs> I'm just playing it off as being as cool. <laughs> it's goddamn terrifying. But I mean, if you want me to back it up, no, no, I can. You, you do what you're comfortable with. Okay. I will deal with it. I'm, I'm not even close to the edge right now. I'm keeping it fairly easy, mm -hmm. just so that I can focus on talking as well. I signed up for this. I know the risks. It's like hot pepper gaming, except you're scared for your life. Yeah. I don't know. That's why people do it, right? The adrenaline rush. I mean, people get fast cars because, not not because it's like, I mean, number one, it's an object of wealth. You get to say like, I bought this car. Look yeah, at me. I, but also, that's, that's the wrong reason, definitely. To yeah, get that's it. not the right reason. But the other reason is like, because people appreciate like the limits of what human engineering can achieve. Uh -huh. Like people want to see the, the edge push. And, and I think like the people that have a stigma against like, what is this flash? You good here? Yeah, I'm good. I was just checking to make sure it's still recording. It's good. Okay. <laughs> it's still like people with the people that hate on Tesla just because oh they think they're better than like internal combustion engine cars. Like that's not what it's about. Like we want to go faster. We want to do it better. Like we want to see it. And if if internal combustion engines can't go any faster, we're gonna find a different way. And like that's the uh, that's the true appeal of Tesla, and that's the reason why it's so successful because. Elon Musk, like, I don't hero worship him at all. Like, I, I've got some issues with how he runs things or how he communicates with things. But number one, first and foremost, his mission was to make sustainable energy and, like, electric cars and that sort of thing popular. Yeah. Because only by making it popular do you allow humanity to kind of adapt to this stuff. It, it makes change happen the faster.
fastest because when something's popular, people are naturally like inclined to do that. Like, especially like the Tesla Model 3, it's an affordable version of the Tesla, but it's still a Tesla. So yeah. people are like, oh, you have a Tesla. Can I see that? And it makes it cool. Therefore, we kind of speed towards the transition towards sustainable energy, like renewable resources, kind of things like that, which is his real goal. And that's the goal that I really appreciate out of what he's doing. Like the advancement of humanity and like the, the commitment to the future of humanity. Now, again, he's not a saint, and he's not like the perfect person to do this, but he's doing it the best that I've seen. I'm about to poop my pants. <laughs> Ugh. Why would you poop your pants if we're staying well below within the motion speed limits? It's just these mountains. I'm, I have a fear of heights. It's just I can see how I high see, they yeah, are. Yeah, there are some peaks and valleys and I'm, stuff like I'm, that. I'm, I got I'm intimidated it. by anything taller than me, so these mountains just make me nervous. I gotcha, for yeah. sure. So you're you're thinking about the idea of the Tesla Roadster uh, at some point? Yeah, Am I right? thinking about it. I just don't see the practicality of it. Oh, it's not practical at all, but oh, that's yeah, the no. beauty of having a car like that. That's right. And do you have, I assume, at least two garage spaces? I do. Uh, Amy's pottery stuff has taken up one of the spaces. Uh, so Garages I... are for cars, all right? No, it's perfect for pottery because she has a kiln and it, it can't be operated inside because it gets hot. It might like burn down a wall or like peel the paint or something like that. It, it's like she needs a space and I wasn't using it. So like I'm fine with it. Like her using Until her Until you get stuff. a roadster and then you kick it out. See, I don't know if I would like a roadster. Yeah, it'd be fast, but my Model X is really fast. Like it, it goes, is, but it doesn't corner. It's straight line fast. True. An SUV is just never going to be something that can corner really well. I mean, I've never tried it. They say it can because it's got such a such a low. Yeah, I mean the batteries do weigh it down quite yeah. a bit for sure. But you're never going to reach this kind of cornering you're in an SUV. Right. Whereas I've, the Roadster, I'm sure that the Roadster, given its specs and all that around the track, will probably be quicker than this car. Probably. Um, it's a, it's going to be a different kind of feeling. I think it'll be a less thrilling kind of quick, but it'll be a, from an engineering standpoint, oh my God, this is just ridiculous kind of quick. Yeah. And again, I, I have no idea. Like the fastest I've taken my car is 65 miles an hour in a 65 zone and 75 in a 75. Right. Right. Of course. But the real fastest I've ever taken it, um, I've gotten it up to like 120 and that was scary. On a, on a track, of course. Yeah. On a track. Yeah. And uh, that was scary to me. Like that was scary. Like. I, uh, I I'm I got the excitement out of it, but for for like my everyday life, I don't need to go that many places. When I take a casual drive, I take it because I don't want to go fast. I just want to like clear my mind and have like a simple task that I'm really familiar with, and I can kind of zone out and I can do it, and I can just like think. Like that's what I like about drives. And here, like if I'm doing this fast, like I'm not thinking about like my future plans or my worries or concerns. I'm thinking about not dying on these roads. I do a little bit of both in the yeah. sense that I'm going to end up stuck behind someone at some point yeah. like we are now and at that point I can think more about some stuff um, but then there are going to be stretches where I can open things up a little bit more and in that case yeah I'm focusing a little bit more on the driving but I, I do enjoy the physical driving experience so that's fine for me. Everyone yeah. has different objectives if there's someone who enjoys going for a drive for some it is just cruise with a top down and a convertible and speed's not a concern it's just the environment the open air and trying to clear their head other people combination of both for other people it is just about going as fast as possible mm -hmm. i saw this guy uh, a few months back as i was on the way to a meeting point for sunday drive that i do every now and again with some other folks and this dude was on the freeway the freeway is moving openly clearly sunday morning and he is going as fast as he can up to the rear of every next car that he hits in whatever lane, slams on his horn, honking at them, and then proceeds to change lanes and go do it to the next person. And I'm just, I can't, I'm trying to think of a logical reason, and I just can't come up with one. If he wanted to go that fast, he could just weave through traffic. It was completely open, but he made it his mission to just honk. And, like, I saw him when he pulled up to someone next to me, he was mad as he was honking. And it's like, why are you even doing this? Are you are you trying to get somewhere? Are you just going for a drive? I can't tell, but whatever the case, you just seem like you're not having any sort of enjoyment out of all this. Why? I mean, I think I know what's wrong with him. Yeah, he's an asshole. 
that's the diagnosis from the official doctor? Yeah. That's a very common diagnosis. You'd be surprised how many people around you are actually just assholes. And there's no explanation for their behavior other than, oh, you're an asshole. Oh, okay, all right, good. Oh, well, now I know that. Okay, and fuck you, and I'm on my way. And then they go about their life. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I mean, some people, like, those are the type of the people that get a fast car because they want to brag. Yeah. Like, they want to be like, look how big my dick is compared to yours. Look at that tiny little hybrid, oh, little pansy ass. Like, that's not you, right? Your, your tiny little hybrid that has a quicker zero to 60. Oh, not, not mine. Yeah, yeah, not mine. like a Prius. I yeah. gotcha. Like a Prius, a stupid Prius. I mean, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I sort of have the stigma against Prii, Priuses. I don't know what the plural ever is I think that. I, I think Prius get a bad rap for totally legitimate reasons. Like, the people oh, that- ball sacks. Oh, here's a Prius. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just did this to myself. Yeah, you did. If yeah. I didn't bring it up, this wouldn't oh, have happened. Man, I'm so and sorry. that sucks because this is the this is one of the best roads yeah. of all time. And we're gonna hit a tunnel soon. And I need to be able to accelerate. Yeah, just Ugh. give yourself space. Yeah. Ugh. The legitimate reasons for Prius is like the first adopters were kind of uppity douchebags about it. Like, I'm saving these environment. Like My mom got one in 2006 and that's all she's had ever since. Yeah. Oh, that's good. She just got a new Prius. Yeah. They're 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 wimpy little cars. They don't have a lot of storage. Their seats are uncomfortable. Like it's all it was super expensive for what it was. Like there's legitimate reasons to not like a Prius. But also, you got to admit Here we go. Okay, hold oh. on. Oh boy. We're rolling down the windows. About to get loud here. Okay. Man. Pretty fun, huh? You got up to 60 real quick. I did. Yeah. And only 60. That, no probably, I, that probably actually was about 60 total. Yeah, wow. That was pretty good. That yeah. tunnel's a fun one. And now we're back at the Prius. Woo! Yeah. But you gotta admit, you have to admit, the Prius was one of the first, like, it was the first hybrid, wasn't it? It wasn't the first, like, executed hybrid. No, I hybrid. think the Honda Insight was It was the first it. popular Popular, hybrid. yes. Yeah. It, it popularized the idea that you can have not only better gas mileage, but this concept that you can, like, use batteries in a way that no one's ever really thought about it in the popular eye. So, you could say, like it didn't really lead to like this revolution where electric cars are starting to be pumped out from everywhere, but it kind of got that mindset going where the first Prius didn't even have lithium ion batteries because yeah, they, they were the cadmium nickel. Yeah. And that's where everyone's counter argument was, well, they're not really saving the environment yeah. because it takes a lot of energy and resources to get the battery material. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's like a common argument and it's perfectly valid. Like it's totally legitimate, but also if we had better ways, like, cause you can capture carbon emissions much easier when it's localized to a power plant than it is spread out around the entire highway. Like there's studies that have been done that show like the detrimental effects of like these emissions are multiplied by the fact that they're spread out. If they're localized, like they can be number one, countered, captured like or isolated. And number two, I'm up to four on my fingers, but number, number two, number, number two, two, number two, I forget my point, but number <laughs> two, like, it, it also, uh, it, it kind of moves people forward into thinking that, like, maybe there should be, maybe there should be, like, a mindset for renewable stuff. Thank you, Prius man. We appreciate oh, it. Oh, Jesus that's fucking how you die. Christ. Oh, my God. All right. That was someone passing when they shouldn't have. Yeah, it is a solid yellow. Do not pass, biker man. Oh, you may. Well, uh, he's he's okay. We're okay. We're thankfully. all good. Jesus Christ. He well, probably shit his pants a little bit. Yep. But yeah, it just gets people in the mindset, like, because that's all it is. Like, th like popular opinion, humanity in general, progress. It's all about like what mindset is going on in the times. Like that affects buying trends. That affects like how people live their life. That affects like what things going on. And in a weird way, it also creates opposition to those effects because naturally in a group setting, if some people are doing one thing, there's gonna be other people that are like, well, I don't like that thing. I like the way things were. I don't like you. And it creates like animosity. So it's, it's got 22, but that's the only way that progress can be made by swaying popular opinion. Yeah, and I, I do think Tesla has done a great job of making the technology more of a household thing 
and something that people think is cool and actually want to achieve. I'm sure there are a lot of kids who, yes, they still want the Lamborghinis and the Ferraris and stuff, but also probably look at a Tesla and they're like, I'd love to have a Tesla when I grow up. Yeah, probably. So they have achieved something pretty, pretty cool in that regard. And I would say you should definitely, oh. you should definitely consider the Roadster. Oh. What's up? Are you okay? Do you get um, motion sickness? No, no motion sickness. Just scary. Okay. Oh. So you can also go there. That's uh, Big Tahunga, and you can connect out to Sunland Tahunga, which is just, it extends the drive. Right now we're going to loop back on uh, Angeles Forest, connect back to Angeles Crest where we started, and then we just head back down the hill uh, a little bit. And uh, it's a fun, isn't this road just amazing though? This is really cool, like the views itself. That's the one detriment I'd say about this car is like, it's a limited view. That's true. Like, uh, it's just like As a passenger, are... and I guess as the driver as well, it's uh... yeah. thank you, Mr. Biker Man. Another thing about the Model X that I really love is just like the big windshield. Yeah. I didn't even realize how much I'd love it until I got it. And we were driving through like the desert canyons with all these mountains and these cool features. And like, we were just able to see, like I didn't even have to look out the sides because I could see it's panoramic all the way to the top. So it's just really, really like, like the view of the driving and seeing everything is one thing. But other than that, this car is wonderful and I would never insult it's it. It's just anyway. because of the carbon fiber monocoque and the way that the roof has to be secured to the car that causes such a low roof line and the fact that the seats are fixed. Yeah. So you're not able to move it forward and get a better view out. Um, but that is actually, it's a cool benefit of the McLaren 720. It has just one of the, one of the most open cabins of any car that I've ever sat in, uh, and you just see out incredibly well, which is unlike any any supercar I've ever been in. Yeah. Um, so they've done something pretty cool with that. But yeah, the visibility out of this is it's not the best thing in the world. But I actually thought it was going to be worse yeah. than it ended up being. Um, like when I first sat inside of it, it was it was actually like three months away from when I got it delivered was the first time I even got to sit inside of one. Uh, at the LA Auto Show, and uh, I, I sat in, and I was immediately like, "Oh my God, I can't see anything out of this at all. Is this going to be a problem when I get the thing?" Um, but it was amazing. Like once I actually got the car and started driving it, pretty immediately I just got used to it, and it's unlike any other car with just how confident I was able to feel behind the wheel so quickly. I'm curious with you. Do you have? Do you have much of like a getting accustomed break-in period when you've gotten a new car where you're kind of nervous to begin with and then you learn the ropes and you get more comfortable with it? Or with you, I don't know if Teslas are just like, you're good to go immediately. Okay, look, we got to learn one thing about me. I drive like a grandpa. Okay. I'm uh, I'm usually like, old, I, I have a, like a rule. I'm like, okay, never more than, never more than six over the speed limit. Like never more, like try to keep it under that. Like drive safe. I always like use my signal. I always like. Well, I, yeah, you should. I always oh, use my signal too. Yeah, everyone, everyone should use their signal, but just like I. Uh, so me, the break-in period is my normal driving. Uh -huh. Like that's how I would drive it anyway. So it's it's never really a transition for me. Like, uh, but with the Tesla, it did take some getting used to because of like the way the regenerative braking works, the like instantaneous acceleration, the no gearing. Like that did take some work, and I will admit, like. It threw me for a bit. Like, even the first model, like, the first one I got, it was 0 to 60 in, like, 4.5 seconds, which isn't, like, the fastest ever. That's, you know, it, if you had uh, told anyone that 0 to 60 in 4.5 seconds was going to be slow, like, 10 years ago, yeah. they would have thought you were crazy. Yeah. Well, it was just, like, I drove a Ford Fusion Hybrid before that. So, pretty decent car. Not fast, yeah, but good car. Uh, hey, we're in a Ford now. We're in Ford. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Elon. I'm sorry. I'll return my Tesla later. But uh, it's uh, it goes down to um, me never experiencing anything that could even remotely throw me back in yeah. my seat. Like I put the pedal to the metal on my Ford. Like it has to decide to kick into gear before it really wants to give me all the power that it's maybe got in its engine that it's just lurking under there. But with the, the, the Tesla, it's as soon as I touch it, yeah. like it's a zoom, 
And as soon as you let go of it, the regenerative breaker is like, okay, we're capturing this. So it it's really like, feels like you've got engine braking in that. Oh yeah, I, I hardly ever use my brake pedal because it just automatically, the slowing is as much as a normal brake would be. Yeah, I have that in my 458. The engine braking is like really, really strong in it. So I can brake by downshifting uh, quite a bit, which you can do in a lot of manual transmission cars, but like this car, for example, it still, even if you downshift, it keeps going. Yeah. Um, which it's nice to not have to use the brakes for sure. Yeah. I'm not getting the electric benefit though in the no. Ferrari. Um, There's been more electric cars, unless you had something else to say. No, no, go for it. There's been more electric cars that I've been seeing more. The Porsche electric car? They, they just named it yesterday. Yeah, what was it? I'm not sure how I feel about it. It's T A Y C A N. So you feel inclined to pronounce it as taken? So it's like the Porsche Taken. Yeah. Have you taken a new test drive in the Taken? Huh. I hope that it's Liam Neeson's new vehicle of choice in Taken 8 or whatever <laughs> whatever they're on to now. Uh, so that's all I saw yesterday was people making puns about the name. Yeah. Uh, I, I guess it goes with Macan. I, I, I assume it, it's pronounced like Tycon or something like that. Tassin maybe? Tassin? Tassin? I think the C is a hard C. Okay. Uh, whatever. But either, either way, like the reviews about it were actually really good, which makes me happy because I really want to see more competition for Tesla. Because mm -hmm. number one, Tesla as a company, I have a lot of grievances with. Like the like, the getting a repair to your car is a nightmare. Like just a is goddamn that just nightmare. because you can't go to a third party body shop? No, you you have to go to authorized body shops okay. that know how to do it. It's gonna cost you an arm and a leg. Like it's just. It's just the prices are through the roof because of the aluminum body. Like it's just hard to work with, and most of the time, if I had a dent in my Tesla, uh, in my uh, Model S, getting that traded into the Model X, they would not take it if it had a dent in it. I had to get it repaired beforehand. Oh, wow. I had to pay out of pocket, like uh, for various reasons, and then um, I had to uh, like wait. Number one, the repair took a month and a half, maybe a month, maybe oh it was God. closer to a month, but it was a month for a repair and just a dent, just one dent month. And then, like while I was waiting for that, they were they had the Model X processing. I like got the got the, my car back. It still took longer. And then Tesla, after they said that, like, okay, like you had to get it repaired. All right, now we're we're we're, we're d reducing like how much we were going to offer you for your trade-in because it's had an accident. <laughs> Go pay out of pocket to get it fixed, and now we're going to just pay you less. Yeah, so it ended up like doubling down how it much it was. It makes sense. Nobody, like, nobody like, wants to it. go and buy a car that has been in an accident. I totally get that. Yeah, and that, I had no problem with that. I really didn't. But they gave me a number before, and then they gave me a number after I had it repaired. And it was just like, I was a little upset with that. That makes sense. Yeah, well, on the other hand, if this thing ever got into an accident, I, I don't even know what happens because it's probably not fun. Uh, uh, I'm sure that it would have to be, like, sent back to Multimatic in Canada. That's the factory where it's produced. But then yeah. they have, they're so occupied with taking care of the assembly line that I don't know, would they get to this? I don't know that any body shops could handle this mm. car in particular because it's not mass produced, really. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see when the first, no one's wrecked there is yet, which yeah. is actually really surprising. Yeah. Now that they've been delivered. Oh, world for, first, world first. Yeah, we could be right here on camera. I get a lot of views. Yeah. Totaled my new Ford GT. Are the views worth it? Mm, not, don't think so. Brought to you by Mountain Dew, get extreme. Maybe if we got like 20 billion views on it, yeah. then it would be worth it. Yeah. Um, addendum, that's kind of unlikely. Addendum onto the Tesla thing. This is like also, I think my expectations were off. I will admit, I think my expectations were off because I looked at the Tesla as like a normal production car. But it's not. It's still, even if I use it as a normal car, it's still a luxury car. Yeah. Like whatever way you want to slice it, it's a luxury car. So I have to like, I, that's why I was never just like, ooh, Tesla's a bad, horrible Elon, you know, fuck you. But <laughs> it's just like, I like, I expected a level of customer service that I just wasn't getting. And it's because I had this expectation that it was going to be like a normal car. Like I was well, paying a lot. Well, that's interesting because I would, in my experience with more luxury vehicles, you should get better support. I've never bought a luxury vehicle before. Like I don't buy luxury. But you're saying that because the Tesla is a luxury vehicle, you get worse 
support. I was thinking it was gonna take like longer and maybe like people wouldn't really know what's going. That was my rationality afterwards. I don't know if that's the right rationalization, but I'm the kind of guy that likes to give people the benefit of the doubt. Because I still do believe in what the company's trying to do. Like I yeah. get that and I do believe in it and I want I want them to succeed, but I also want them to be better. Like <laughs> I always expect better out of people when I know they can do better so like as a company and as a whole and I know they're just a company that's trying to make money but they, I know they can do better and I want them to do better it just sounds like in summary you love the product but when things go wrong it's just not handled super great exactly that and that was my conclusion in the video like because I actually I was so frustrated I made a I live streamed on Facebook and it was just like the original title was you should never buy a Tesla oh I wow was, you I, went I, really I was hard pissed off but I didn't really go hard in the video itself. I was being very rational. And then like they got in contact with me. They they didn't they they gave me more. They they said it was just a dent. So I guess it can't qualify as being in an accident. Like cause all I did, I backed up into a pole. Uh -huh. And then I didn't lie on my assurance. I was like, no, no, I didn't back up into a pole. Like that was me. I did it because I have this fucking honesty streak. Um, but then so they took they, they took the deduction off. They hurried as much as they could. The other reason I was wrong, and this is where it got personal for me, is because I wanted the car, they promised the car sooner, beginning of December, which is when I wanted to take it over to Cincinnati because I wanted my dog, Chica, to meet my childhood dog, Buddy, my stepmom's dog. Buddy died a week before I left. And so had, so had the delay not had been the, there. Had the delivery been like when he, they first told me it was, because I wasn't going to get it unless I could get it in time to get over there like I was personally upset because yeah. they missed the date and it caused me to miss an opportunity that I'll never be able to get back where my 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 current dog gets to meet my childhood dog and so that's where I was like emotionally hurt by it and it, it is unfair to criticize something for something that where I'm kind of hurt right that being yeah, said obviously, I, you are allowed to be disappointed but yeah I it's Tesla was not attempting to personally slight you and no, be like, yeah. you see this guy? Mm. He really don't want his dogs to meet. And that's why <laughs> Elon just like rubbing his hands <laughs> there like <laughs> and then, he, uh, he like has an alternate account where he follows you on Twitter and does everything he can yeah. to, God, some, something's happened up here. Something, yeah. Dude, like there were a lot of cops earlier that we were following a they, couple of sheriff bikes. They were search and rescue teams. That's what the, they said on the side of it. I don't know if someone like went off, and but Maybe. that was a lot of vehicles going up there. Yeah. This road in particular, sorry, I'm, I'm going uh, off on a different topic. Go for it, yeah. Um, but you have, you have no cell service up there, so it is always a wonder, what, what does happen if you have an emergency? And say you go off, and you go off in a spot that nobody can see that you went off. Yeah. Just kind of screwed. Yeah. No, you're right. Like, that would just be, yeah, you'd die. Pretty much. That's grim. Well, hopefully they find him. Yeah. If that so. even is what's happening. I mean, it, it, on the, God, there's another. On the plus side, at least, uh, it's not winter because it gets very cold up here. Mm -hmm. uh, like, mount, if you follow this, you get to Mountain High eventually. Wow. Again. Jesus, dude. Yeah. Uh, yeah, when you follow this, you get to Mountain High eventually, and that's the local ski area. I'm not sure if you've ever been there or not. Nope. Um, it's not fantastic skiing, but... You can drive a supercar and go snowboarding. That's <laughs> nice. Yeah, I, I mean, it'll be a little icy in the winter, so maybe not the best idea, but when I was there, there was a Lambo in the parking lot. That sounds great. Yeah. All so. those poor sons of bitches going up the hill. Dude, I, like, like I was saying, mad respect to those bikers, but you're crazy. Okay, this is where I'm going to be a little biased and may seem like an asshole. N none of those bikers had, like, biker bod to me. Some of them were, like, overweight, like, beyond middle age They're trying to better themselves they are they are and i and i applaud them for that but i'd expect no one would take this hill for their first time like trying to get in shape this seems like this seems like like you want to run so you go enter a marathon like that day like, but i this see this is where i'm an asshole because i'm going to be judgy about it and I, like, i'm not being judgy about it i'm just saying like that was a casual observation that i made and i'm judging a book by its appearance and i'm going to sound like a dick but some of them were overweight. Some of them, but there were plenty, I think, we passed that seemed to be in the shape you would expect a biker to be going True. up that night. Absolutely, yes. I, I mean, but at the same time, 
they're not really holding anyone up. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm not saying it as a criticism to it. I am really happy that they're going up that hill. Like, I'm all about, like, all or nothing. You take the hard road. Yeah. Like, you do whatever it takes. Like, that's what I'm about. But also, this was literally just an observation that I was making. I don't think that I could do that hill myself. I'm going to be completely yeah. honest with you. We're on camera twice now. Hey, Double camera. <laughs> Subscribe to Markiplier. Subscribe! Hey, oh, sorry. So subscribe think, to Captain Sparkles. I don't think he can hear you. Oh, why but, not? Uh, he, can, he's going to read my lips later. Subscribe to Markiplier. <laughs> Is that how you got all your subscribers and yelling it out in public places? Dude, you got a network wherever you go. I throw business cards out the window wherever I drive. I get littering tickets all the time, but it doesn't matter. I got the subs. That's, what, that's where it counts. I, uh, subscribe. A long, long time ago, back in the Machinima days, this was seven and a half years ago at this point, they, they have this thing called being a premier director. I don't know if you remember any of this stuff. I, I had no idea about Machinima or anything like that. Okay. So being a premier director was like, it was a tier above just being able to give your videos to Machinima to have them post on, your, on their channel. You'd get like priority and you'd be called the premier director and it's like a prestigious kind of thing. And so they had an open spot and they basically made it sort of an open campaign. And so I you know, caring about those things at the time made a video. And uh, in the video, I called up just random businesses. And I was like, hey, can I get your vote to help me be premier director? Mm. So I haven't done it since then, but I did campaign at one point. Really? Yeah. So you just stuck with it throughout the years, which seems to have been a better way to go about it. (laughs) I just stopped after that one. Because I was like, I have anxiety about doing this. Honestly, I actually haven't. Like, that's one of the most fascinating things to me about my channel is uh, I don't do the the like and subscribe thing very much. I, I do it occasionally, but it always is, like, tongue-in-cheek. Yeah. I've never really outwardly gone out there and been like, subscribe. And when I have, like, I've done it for, like, some compilation videos. I was, like, at the end of it, all like, oh, subscribe, like, trying to, like, mimic what other people were doing. It just felt weird. Like it, it does. To me, it's like people will subscribe if they like the content. If they want to see more of it, if they believe in me as a person, they'll subscribe because they believe in what I'm doing. And that's it. Like I don't want to have to coerce anyone into subscribing to me. I don't want to have to like persuade someone to like me because I really don't care if people don't like me. That's fine. I want to leave that up to people's judgment. And if I'm constantly making consistently good stuff, then the people will come no matter what. Now, that being said, in the beginning phases, like, you, when you're getting going, you have to, like, hit the ground and you have to hit the pavement. But once you get, like, a fan base under your feet, if you trust and believe in the fan base and you, like, put the power in their hands to promote your content, I think that's just a more wholesome and overall a more healthy way to, like, execute how you run a channel. I agree. That being I, said... I have, a, at the end of my videos, I just do a little... I have like my 15 second spiel at the end. It's like, if you like the video, I like it. It's not subscribe, it's just subscribe. And that's totally um, fine, yeah. But it's when, it's when it's at like the very beginning, like someone has just clicked on the video, yeah. it's just starting, and the video starts with, hey, welcome guys, uh, if you are not subscribed, make sure to subscribe and like it. I'm like, what, what am I, li- I don't know what I'm liking yet. Yeah, exactly. I haven't seen the product. Yeah. At, least, at least let me taste before you tell me to rate the food on Yelp. That'd be like that'd be like at the beginning, I just walk into the restaurant and at the front of the menu, they're like, before you open this up, make sure you give us five stars on Yelp. I'm like, how am I gonna do that? Yeah. I don't know what it tastes like. Yeah. I don't know your service. So that's the one part where I'm like, uh, come on guys, mm-hmm. C- come on. Just, yeah. just give me a moment here. Yeah, and the and bad guess. thing is that it does work. It does. It does. It creates a feedback loop, but it doesn't create, like, it doesn't create belief in the person there. Like, if someone does that, they're going to get more numbers, but those numbers don't have any longevity, they don't have any meaning, like, they don't have any, like, actual, like, throughput to some extent. It does work, it does not. Like, getting more eyes on you is important. Like, it's marketing, it's stuff like that. The way I look at it is there's a divide. Are you trying to build a brand, or are you trying to build yourself you know what they kind of go hand in hand though they do they, most of the time they do but when it comes down to things like that if you encourage people to do that sort of stuff like they're going to believe in you to some respect but they're you're more pushing them towards your brain like like because of this as a whole where at the end of the video if, if you do your spiel or i like don't really say much or i just encourage people to watch more 
I think it more leads into a belief in the person as a self. Like, believe that I am going to make more good stuff. Whereas before, it's like, help make this brand big. Right. Like, they're, they're two sides of the same coin. But there, there is an important difference between the two, to, to me anyway. Maybe and not I, to anyone I think you do hit sort of a critical mass point where your priority isn't as much about, like, I need growth, 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 and it becomes more, well, what can I do in order to try to get personal fulfillment? What do I really enjoy? Damn. Do I really want to be just uh, going and, and trying to yell out to get people to follow and stuff every start of every video, or yeah. do I have another thing that will make me happy or another approach where it's just keeping it laid back, letting the content speak for itself, and... I don't even know if I've hit the perfect balance of it yet. I think it's always a work in progress. I mean, the, the balance is hard to maintain because the fulcrum always shifts. Yeah. Like you never really know where you stand. That's why so many people get burnt out. That's why you're hearing about, like, more, especially, like, last year, you heard about all these other YouTubers that were talking openly about getting burnt out, like, feeling this pressure. And it's, it is this, like, this push to get more. It's like this never, it's never enough mentality. You're always comparing yourself to others. It, it's what leads, like, people who even aren't YouTubers, like some artists and like creators in other avenues besides YouTube, they fall into depression Yeah, burnouts cycles. are not unique to yeah, YouTube. Not at all. Means. It happens because of like this pressure you put on yourself to create more, but not for yourself. You create more for others and then you don't feel the fulfillment of being like, I'm satisfied with what I made. And then like what I've, what I did last year, like I even reached burnout. I took a month off because I was like, I'm happy to work hard but I'm not happy to work hard if I'm not happy with what I'm making. Right. So this year I've been taking it really laid back. I've been taking it easier. I've been I've been messing with people a lot more. I've been creating these obscene, obscure challenges like to myself and people are always like, what the fuck are you doing, Mark? And I'm like, I'm doing this to myself because it makes me happy and like it makes me laugh and I find it funny. And uh, For longevity, that's a good thing. And yeah. I even, I, have taken a pretty big step myself in just the past few weeks of scaling back the amount of content on the main channel just because now I have got these four different channels and so if I want to maintain my sanity I need to I there's no way I can maintain the additional content on the new channels while also maintaining as much content that I was putting out on Captain Sparkles and I think it also ends up it's going to degrade the content on that channel if I try yeah. to maintain. There was a nice almost accident right there. Mm. Um, it'll degrade the content, and I think it's just healthier for everyone to try to balance things out a little bit more. No, I'm, I, oh, I haven't taken a break yet, ever, and I don't know if I could see myself doing that. The idea of it sounds nice, but I think I would stress myself even more by doing that. I thought I would. It turns out, like, when I was when I was away for a whole month, like, people were totally fine with it. Because I explained exactly why. Like, people people don't realize this. YouTubers especially don't realize it. But people out there, the people watching, they're actually pretty reasonable. Like, if you explain what you're thinking, why you're doing something, why you're making a decision, like, people, the majority of people will be like, okay, I get that. I may not like it, but I get it. And if I give people, like, if I say I'm going on a month break and I say I'm definitely doing this other project still, I'm still going on tour, I'm going to come back on a specific date, people were fine with that. And then when I came back, everyone was like, hey, he's back. And then this year, I went from two videos a day to one video a day. And I made a video being like, I feel like I'm putting out two crappy videos when I can make one video that I'm proud that's, of. That's that was my feeling. And then I was like, and then I told people that, and they, some people weren't happy with it because they were afraid they were going to get less content. But overall, like, the length of my videos increased, like the the quality of how I was approaching it. Like I was making videos, and if I wasn't happy with the video at the end of it, I didn't just throw it up to throw it up. Uh, I'm sorry, I poked my finger in it. It didn't do nothing. I swear. Oh, I'm really scared that you could have damaged my precious Alcantara. Yeah. And then, uh, but I've I've also made videos. Like even now, I've got three videos that I've made over the past week that I wasn't terribly happy with, so I'm not going to post them. I might throw them up somewhere or just like. Now the people watching this are going to be like, wait. You have content you haven't posted. We need it. I used to do that all the time. When I was when I was like first starting out, I would make videos. I'd be like, yeah, this game is garbage," and I'd throw away like six videos that uh -huh. I had recorded. I I used to keep a collection of them, but I've lost them at this point. But damn, the unseen. Yeah, videos. the Markiplier archives. You could make a new channel and just post all the uh, the throwaway takes of things, and you bet people would watch it. I bet they would. Yeah, I bet they would. But at the same time, it's kind of nice for me to make something 
and not have the pressure of that being like, okay, this has to go up. Like, I'm not happy with it, but I have to fulfill my quota. Right. Like, doing that is the death of creativity. And every YouTuber has had to do that at some point or felt, no one's forced to, but everyone's felt obligated to meet their video upload schedule. So it happens. It mm -hmm. just does. I think uh, you you watching, you might not realize how much power you have over us, but it is it is everything. Yeah. <laughs> and a lot of it, though, is self-imposed psychological power. Like Definitely. We, we have this fear of, like, letting people down. We have this fear of, like, oh, no, if I don't keep in people's eyes for this long, then they're going to forget about me. But I think that's, like, the benefit of the difference between we who, like, casually encourage viewers to keep watching versus those that shout. If they stop shouting, their channel will probably not last very long. It might last a couple years, but if they stop shouting, they won't last long. We who, not, not, and I'm not trying to create, like, a, I'm better than everyone who does that and I'm the best, because I have my flaws too, and I'm a, I'm a fucking asshole majority of the time anyway. But if people want to give, like, their audience the respect that they deserve and they treat them with, like, honest compassion and they, they, they try to be understanding and they try to maintain a dialogue and it's difficult to do with millions of people but when you actually make an effort for it I think it makes all the difference in the world yeah, yeah. I agree and I'm I'm constantly trying to figure out how to best do the balance and, and be like alright are, what are people going to be understanding of and where is that tipping point of you don't care about us and why are you letting this content fall to the wayside so it can be tough, but yeah, I, in general, I think that if you get past that vocal minority of people who will loudly express their grievances, most people are generally understanding of things. It always helps to remember that the people who are talking, either positive or negative, are only about 5% of the entire fan base. Yep. The vast majority of viewers are silent, passive watchers, but they still have feelings, thoughts, care, have emotions, they follow trends, they just don't ever communicate that they do. So, like, when you keep that in mind, you always remember that if if there's 5% of people talking that are mad, and 95% that are happy, or even if it's 50-50, that's a huge number scaled up to the people that are passively just like, okay, or maybe like, nah, I'm not okay with it, and that's fine. And so that helps me just like keep it all in perspective and try not to get take it too seriously. Yeah, and it's funny because I am that passive viewer in every situation. Me there too. is there is no channel, even though I consider myself a fan of various channels, there is no channel for which I'm like an active participant in comments or discussions yeah, yeah. or things like that. Yeah. And so even though I am that person, it's still very easy to forget and, yeah. and pay attention to the loud vocal minority mm -hmm. and be like, is this represented? No, it's not representative yeah. of everyone. You have to sort of remind yourself of that. Yeah. Oh boy, LA traffic on a Sunday. You just gotta weave. Yeah. Weave. Not an easy thing to do in this car <laughs> with uh, really low visibility. Yeah. <laughs> so, but it is great. I could just right now pop it into auto, which some loud vocal minority will be upset about. Oh. But when you hit traffic, it's so nice to just have that option to toggle back into auto. That is nice. Perfectly happy to do it. That's Sorry, a, guys. The one best part about Tesla Autopilot is LA traffic. You turn that on, so long as you pay attention for people cutting you off, it makes it so much more bearable. Yeah. Because I, like, I get pain in my foot just from like, I used to get pain on my Ford Fuse just like doing this dance, the back and forth between the gas and the brake. Right. But uh, with the Tesla, it's just like, oh, thank you. Even a car with like adaptive cruise control is like a dream. Yeah, my, I've, I try not to get too into it because I feel like it, the topic comes up in each video um, from my from my side because I have the Mercedes that has the Mercedes equivalent of autopilot, mm -hmm. and it's great. I sometimes, and I think I've said this before, so I apologize. If there are two different routes, one is like take these side streets, you'll get there five minutes faster. One is take the freeway, um, which has heavy traffic. Sometimes I'll opt for the freeway just I, because I it always, is easy. I hate taking left turns. Like I hate I hate left turns at a stop sign, especially in LA. I hated them in Cincinnati. Here, I cannot do it. If 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 directions get me and it'd be like turn left and it's three lanes both ways, I'm turning right. I'm making, <laughs> I'm making four rights. I'm not I'm not doing that left. You cannot make me do that. And that's the thing, like, with Waze, how it'll sometimes be like, hey, go across Wilshire Boulevard at rush hour oh my at God. a stop sign. It's done like, that to me. <laughs> what? Well, how do you expect me to... Okay, I'm In turning right. In what world? <laughs> yeah. 
And I've seen people actually do that. Yep, maneuver. I saw I'm one like, yesterday. I'm like, oh my Dude, God. stop traffic. He just poked his nose out into the first lane, causing the first car to stop. And then everyone's like, oh, is it pedestrian crossing? So they stop with it. And uh, then he got across. And I, yeah. It was crazy, but I, I would never do it myself. But good on you, I suppose. That is another thing, though, that scares me so much is when people, like the rule, number one, if you see someone stop in the middle of the road as an intersection is approaching, even if you don't see anything, you stop because there is a very likely scenario someone's crossing the street or something yeah. is happening there. And sometimes people will be like, why would this person be stopping in the middle of nowhere at an intersection? Then they blast through and then that's how something gets hit. Yeah. So, public service announcement to everyone. If someone stops at a, anywhere in the road, there's probably a reason for it and you should slow down the worst is that you lose a couple seconds of your time but i saw someone i was like feet away from someone being hit a few months back crosswalk i stopped and the person next to me blasted through and was probably just a few inches from blowing the person away yeah you know what makes me like it's the weirdest thing to make me have faith in humanity but this one thing about driving that makes me have faith in humanity is when you're driving down a road and there's an ambulance coming down, everyone moves out of the way. It's very rare Nine, for someone to be a dad. Very rare. And and what that makes me realize is that like, even if people are only doing this out of obligation because they learned it, like you do this, everyone at some base level realizes that there's someone in trouble, someone needs help, it's more important that they get through and get help than us get on with our day. And everyone is okay with that. And that's kind of like this, except for that one asshole, there's always that one asshole, but like, that's the kind of thing. Whenever I see like a full road just split off and let a, a like an ambulance pass, I'm like, maybe we're gonna be okay. Maybe we're gonna be all right. Maybe sometimes we can have our priorities in the right place. It is nice to think about. And then you see the guy that's running up to people, honking, swerving around, and honking. But as always, that one guy. Yeah, he probably doesn't pull over for an ambulance. I'm probably gonna be honest. Doesn't. I don't like to judge people too much, but. <laughs> I would say that is a good indicator of other things in his life. That's the guy that when an ambulance goes by him, he speeds up and follows the ambulance oh, yeah. to use it. But that's that's less bad than just straight up trying to speed up in oh. front of the ambulance. <laughs> He's just like, i got to get away from this guy. It's crazy. Or what, what would happen is that he would then catch up to the ambulance and start honking on it and yeah. have to go fast. <laughs> Maybe he's just uh, encouraging them. Like, you got to get that guy to the hospital. Go. That's absolutely it. We're going to look on the positive side of things yeah, here. Yeah, exactly. Have some faith in people. Um, yeah. Well, you know, I think uh, as we approach the camera almost running out of battery and we're yeah, at this about one's the almost usual, dead too. Okay. I think we might, uh, we might wind things down. But, you know, it's good to end things on positivity yeah. and restoring faith in humanity. So... Thank you so much for coming on. It's been a pleasure. Oh, thanks for having me. That I knew you ride. were worried about talking about car stuff, and then we ended up getting really into it. Yeah, no. So. I, I do not know very much about, like, car brands, stuff like that. But I, I know and appreciate the science behind it. Like, I, I definitely understand the engineering of it. And that's, like, the technical aspects that I really appreciate about it. Because at the end of the day... And you are, and you are far more knowledgeable about the electric and the battery side of things than I am. So, hey... You, you did well. <laughs> Teamwork makes the dream work. Never know how to best take my hand off the wheel in this car. All right. Well, uh, that'll be it. Until next time, have a good one. Be sure to subscribe to Cabin Sparkles. Hit that like this button. Actually on, right. oh. It's on Jordan Marin. Subscribe to Jordan Marin. Fuck. Also, subscribe to Multiplier. Mark, Multiplier? Mul subscribe to Multiplier. <laughs> <laughs> subscribe to Jordan Marin. Hit that like button in the face. Write you a comment you with your favorite moment and put a timestamp of your favorite moment in this entire drive. Thank you. But we needed to do that at the very beginning. You just put That's this where in you the beginning. It. Yeah, just cut it and put it at the very beginning. No one will be able to tell which way we're going in LA traffic. Definitely. Yeah. Okay, well, I'll consider it. You heard it here. All right, we'll see you next time.